Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what I am up to. So in today's video, I will be bringing you three DIYs for home decor using drop cloth fabric. I absolutely love using drop cloth fabric. It's reasonably priced. It is so versatile. So I am happy to share these DIYs with you. And yes, I go through Pinterest. These are Pinterest inspired, but they are all my little take and my version of them. So for my first DIY, I needed to find a simple outline of just a bunny. So to Pinterest, I went a hopping. From there, all I did was copy the image. You will know if you're allowed to or not, it won't let you copy it. And then after I copied it, I'm pasting it into my Excel program. And then I'm guesstimating on what size of fabric bunnies I would like to make. I knew that I wanted to keep this just simple. So basically what I'm doing is using the outline of the bunny as my pattern. So I'm just going to print these out on regular copy paper. And now I have my drop cloth fabric. I purchased this one off of Amazon. I've got it folded over, doubled up, and then I'm going to lay my piece of paper that I printed out that simple outline of the bunny on top of that. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is pin the paper on to the drop cloth and then cut it out from there. Okay, so I am a learn as I go kind of person and I have probably shared with you in the past that I am not a seamstress. <laughs> so I quickly realized like one, I didn't need as many copies of the bunny as I printed out and two, that I should actually pin the bunny itself onto the fabric. That way it's not sliding around. So yep, sometimes I have to work problem solve why I'm doing a craft and then I'm like, oh, well I can make this a little bit easier on myself the next time. Now that I have the bunnies cut out of the drop cloth, I'm going in with hot glue and I'm going to be gluing my seams together starting with my ears. So I'm going to go all the way around the whole outside of the bunny, leaving the, the, the bunny's bottom <laughs> unglued so I can put the stuffing in that way. So to stuff my bunny, I am going to be using polyfill. And of course, this is a bag I thrifted. I can't help it. I always am looking for craft items in the thrift stores. So, yep, a bag of thrifted polyfill it is. So to do the ears, I actually have a bamboo skewer that'll help me push up that foam into the ears. And maybe it would have been easier to put a little in and then glue it down. But, uh, uh, I, you know, hey, why make everything easy? Either I didn't get that section glued very well or I poked it all the way through. But either way, I can just glue it back together. After I get them all filled up with the polyfill, I'm going to go ahead and push the polyfill back and then glue that bottom section together. Now to give my bunny a little bit more interest, <laughs> even though I have it glued together, I'm going to take some of this thread. I used this thread 
I need cushion for some tuffing and so hand sewed it. And I absolutely love the two colors, even though, yep, they're really light creamish colors playing off each other. So I'm going to go ahead and hand stitch all around these little bunnies. Now I'm using an upholstery needle, so it's a little bit thicker of a needle, um, but I'm really trying to go above where the glue is. And no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have enough thread on the entire to go around the whole bunny the first time. So all I'm making sure is when I go to put more thread on that I make sure that my little tie-offs are what I can go to consider the back of the bunny. So where I'm making any little knots or where I started, the little knots will be behind the bunny. And then we're going to give this bunny a bow, just some more of that same thread that I used. It's a lot thicker of a thread. And of course, we got to make little bunny ears for him using the bow technique. So, yep, I just double knotted it so it stayed on, made some bunny ears, just tied a simple bow, and then cut the excess thread off. So for my next project, we're going to be using this wreath form. I think they probably came from the Dollar Tree store is my guess, but I had thrifted a whole bunch of these forms and am looking for projects to use them on. Continuing on with that drop cloth, now I just have a piece that I cut off so it's a little bit more workable, and now I need to cut it into some strips. So I ended up cutting two inch sections of strips by, I would say, I think my board is 16 or 18. Just something that is workable and able to grab. I'll probably cut off a lot of the excess, but I just wanted to be able to handle it and work with it as is. So what I'm doing here is, yep, I'm going to do a version of a rag wreath, but not where I'm going to put a whole bunch of little ties and all three of those wires. I'm just going to tie it in a type of knot if, if you're a boy scout you may know what this type of knot is i don't know i just saw it on pinterest so now what i'm doing here is i'm just folding it in half making it so that i have a nice loop trying to keep my tails um even if i can but i know that i'm going to be cutting the excess off so yep i'm just going to fold it in half i'm going to put it under that wreath i'm going to put it through that hole and then i'm just going to pull it tight Now I didn't want to be able to see any of that wire so I went through and now I'm just tightening them up making sure that there isn't any gap that I don't need to tie another one on. Now for my next step I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess that I don't want. I want my pieces of drop cloth to kind of stick out. So what I did was I pulled them tight like a bow. As you see one's going towards the inside, one's going towards the outside. This drop cloth isn't as heavy of a thickness as I've gotten in the past, so it's a little bit on the limp side. They seem to all be different, even though you think you're ordering the same one. So, so what I'm doing is I'm just pulling that tight, and then I'm going to cut off the excess of what I think looks nice. So I'm just going to follow that pattern all the way around the wreath.
Now, since I don't want this to come untied and I want that one string to hang in the middle, um, I'm going to put just a little dab of hot glue and control it so it'll say where it is. So did anybody see my last drop cloth video where I made rosettes? Oh my goodness. Yep, I've just been thinking of the days where I can make some more rosettes <laughs> to put on something. So this is actually a simple rosette. So what I did is I cut those two inch strips into an inch. And now, yep, I just taped one side down and I'm just doing a simple braid and braiding these three pieces of drop cloth together. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the uneven ends and make it so they're all nice and even put a little hot glue to keep them together and now all i'm going to do is start rolling this up into a nice little circle package and as i roll it up put a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place put a little bit more hot glue roll it again and then this is going to make that simple rosette where you don't have to twist it the braid is acting like the twists as I come to the end, I just untape it, I put a little bit more glue, and then I'm just going to gently twist it. As you see, those layers are not as even as I would have liked them to be, but you know, we were braiding, so cut off the excess, and then I'm going to work one little piece of the drop cloth underneath the rosette, little by little, just adding some glue until it lays down. Now all I'm going to do is put a lot of hot glue on the back of that. That hot glue really soaks into this drop cloth. I'm going to just determine where I'd like a grouping of three. As you saw, I made three of these braided rosettes to add to this wreath. Just a little bit more visual interest. Well, I have two forms, and since I already have this mess all over the place, I might as well continue on making one more of the wreaths. So this time I decided that I thought the two inch was okay, but I'd like to try one with just a one inch. So I'm going to do a little bit, a little bit more cuts on the drop cloth using what I have left. Cut whatever strips that are two inches that I already have left, and cut those into the one inch, and go ahead and tie on another wreath. And then this time I tied them the opposite way. I went over and then under with going through the hole to see if that would puff up the layers of my drop cloth just a little bit more. Now for this one, I'm going to do the twist rosettes where you just take a piece of the drop cloth and you start twisting it and gluing it into a circle. So a little bit of glue to get that one end into always kind of working down with your ends so that they're tucked underneath your rosette and now all i'm doing is a little bit of hot glue a little bit of twisting of the fabric and working around a circle So now I'm going to do that exact same thing where I put a whole bunch of little glue on the back of it and then press it into my wreath. Now I really thought that I was going to keep this one a little bit on the longer side, but once you hang it, hung it, it just kind of all dangled kind of awkwardly. <laughs> so I decided to do the same thing I did with the first one and cut those strips down, but I did end up placing my rosettes on here first. Glenn is always the most interesting cat. You cannot turn around for two seconds and then he is on your project. That little critter, I tell you what.
for my final project, I'm going to be making some drop cloth flowers. Oh my goodness. Yet again, just like making those pop can flowers out of that aluminum, I have been looking for other ways to make flowers. So I'm use actually going to be using my Cricut for this. I went and found just a simple pattern of a leaf. And now I'm just kind of guesstimating on what size I think that I need these to be. So I'm just taking some fabric measuring tape, doing that round circle and kind of guesstimating what size leaf I want to make. Then after I got that size, then I'm going to try to fill up my page, my Cricut 12 by 12 sheet with how many leaves I can cut out at once. Now I went to my cotton because that's what I'm going to be cutting. And then, yes, this is the rotary tool. The Cricut has different little cutting tools, and this is actually the rotary tool. So you put it in in place of your cutting blade, and yep, I put the fabric on. I have a fabric mat that came with the Cricut mats that I had purchased. And so now, yep, let's just see what it does. This is my first time ever cutting out drop cloth fabric and yes you could have definitely cut these out by hand but having the consistency of a pattern leaf and i have a machine that will do it for me why not and yes i have trust issues so as you see i have a little bit of scotch tape holding down my fabric i know how lightweight this drop cloth can be mm -hmm. I'm definitely happy with how many I could cut out. Yep, the next time I cut out, I'll fill that entire sheet. But better to waste just a little bit if it didn't go the way I planned. So now all I'm doing is I have some floral wire that is in brown. And I'm just taking a little bit of hot glue, just a little bit of the tip, and then folding that petal just ever so slightly at the bottom. And now I'm going to cut that excess off. Um, and then just keep doing it. I just need something to fold that leaf. So now for my first layer of the flower, these petals will not have any of the wire in them. So all I'm going to do is I just have this piece of wood. You can get these in your craft section at Hobby Lobby, your craft stores. I actually have a whole bunch of random bags that I have thrifted over time and I am happy to finally have an idea of what to do with them. So for my first row of petals, what I'm doing here is I'm just overlapping them just slightly, gluing that little bit of a tip down so that they're standing upright and holding it a little bit so that that glue dries in that upward position. For my next layer of petals, you could leave this as is if you like that look, but I kind of wanted a bigger flower for, with my inspiration that I saw on Pinterest. And I always wish I would screenshot something, but something at times I just go by my memory. So what I'm doing here is now I'm centering that next petal with the wire in it um, in between the other two petals and then just putting a little bit of hot glue on to hold it. Now I'm gonna take one more piece of wood. Yep, see, I told you, I thrifted these random pieces of wood and I just, I've had them for over a year, it looks like. So I guess I better get them used up. This is their time. So I'm gonna place another one of those little pieces of wood in the middle of this. So I ended up making a total of five flowers, but now I need to give them some stems so we can put our flowers in a vase. So I just have these kebab sticks <laughs> that I'm going to be using today. And then I'm going to put it, be putting a little bit of antiquing wax so they just, they just have a little bit of age to them. Then I'm just going to hot glue them onto the flower. So I'm just gonna pick out an area that I think that'll cover a little bit of the stem and just hot glue it on. Now in pre-thought thinking about making these, I might have 
petite stain dyed the fabric before. After aging that stick a little bit, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go in with a wet piece of drop cloth and some of that antiquing wax and just give it a little bit of age. I don't feel as if you can see the petals a little bit, and I definitely want these to have more of a type of primitive vibe going on to them. So that's all I'm doing is just dabbing them randomly with a wet antiquing waxed towel. So now to put them in a vase. Now I have this random, I believe these are vintage or maybe newer, I'm not sure, um, milk sample bottles. But I've had it forever. I've used it in my decor. I put it in the booth. It didn't sell. So what a perfect opportunity to use it as a vase for these flowers. And then, yep, I've got this crinkled bag of brown. And I really like putting these in these clear glass. And yeah, I thrifted it. I can't help it. People donate stuff and I am willing to buy it. So all I'm going to do is fill up this jar with some of this brown crinkled paper and then I'm going to put my flowers in that. Yep, you can use Spanish moss, you could use anything. That just way it hides the stems and just gives that glass a little bit something more. today's video and as always tell me which one of the three were your favorite and yep I had to throw a little bit of Easter in there because hey yes my those little simple Easter bunnies I'm watching everybody else may I had to make some too so thanks for watching today's video guys and as always give me a comment of which one was your favorite if you've tried this if you're going you're you're if you're going to try it and then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so youtube knows that you like this kind of content and they'll keep recommending us and if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what i'm up to bye